everyone, Chris here and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the books I read between October 12th and October 18th. First up is Legacy by Nora Roberts and I gave this book four stars. In this book we're following Adrian who met her father for the very first time at seven years old when he tried to kill her and her mom tried to stop him and he ended up dead. That summer she spent with her grandparents while her mom turned her fitness brand into a business. Years later and Adrian has started her own yoga based business but wants to do as much of it on her own so really fights her mom for control of that because her mom wants to help but she knows that her mom's version of help will be trying to take over. Since everything that happened with her father dying the two haven't been particularly close so Adrian really struggles with that. Her yoga business takes off but as her fame grows, she starts getting death threats, which leaves her kind of unsettled, and her mom tells her that's just a part of fame. These death threats arrive year after year, and Adrian kind of starts to get used to it. Even though it does still bother her, though she tries not to let it, and it bothers her even more when it continues after she moves back to her grandparents' town. When the letters continue to follow her, she again worries that maybe she's overthinking it, but when things start to escalate, she wonders if she was right to be concerned. So I don't typically read standalones from Nora Roberts, so I wasn't quite sure what to expect, but I did end up enjoying this quite a bit. It definitely had a lot of twists and turns, though I totally pegged who was sending the death threats. I think the thing I enjoyed most about this is that when Adrian sets up her yoga company, she does it with some kids she's in school with and they kind of become this like really close tight-knit group and it has a lot of that found family vibes and I really enjoy that and I like the family vibes of getting to see Adrian and her grandparents and she has a friend that she made the summer she stayed with her grandparents after her mom accidentally kills her father and we get to see her friend's family so there's a lot of family vibes in this even though it is definitely a bit of a mystery thriller. I really enjoyed this book more than I thought I was going to, and I'm glad that my mom convinced me to give it a try. Next up, I read They Threw Us Away by David Cross, and I gave this book 3.25 stars. This was the middle grade monthly pick for October. So in this book, we're following teddy bears who wake up in a dump and aren't sure what's going on and figure all they have to do is get back to the store, and they will be able to figure out how they accidentally ended up in the dump and what is going on. So this book is really, really strange because there are drawings in it that are a bit creepy and it is supposed to kind of be a horror, but it's supposed to be a middle grade horror, but I don't find it particularly scary. But then again, I'm not a middle grader. So maybe if I was a middle grader, I would think it was scary. In some ways, it gave me a Toy Story vibe because you have these teddy bears who wake up and are able to move, but like, obviously the humans don't know they have the ability to move and they have no idea how they got to this dump and it is really following their journey of escaping the dump and trying to get back to the store to find out why they were in the dump in the first place. I think I enjoyed this more as I read it and then a lot of the details started to fade away so I bumped this down like originally I had it I had it rated higher. It is such a strange book. I, I really have no idea who I would recommend this book to because it's 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 a strange book. And I don't see myself continuing on with the series, but I didn't hate it as much as a lot of people did because, again, with it being a middle grade monthly pick, a lot of people really didn't enjoy it or, like I am, are a bit confused by it. So I wouldn't say it was a complete waste of time, but again, I wouldn't have a clue who to recommend this book to because it, it's a strange one. So, I mean, I guess if you like the idea of a kind of Toy Story teddy bear horror-ish middle grade, then maybe check it out. But otherwise, I would say pass on this one. Next up, I read Survive the Night by Riley Sager, and I gave this book two stars. I read this book for plot-driven book for the Magical Hopathon. So in this book, we're following Charlie, whose friend has been murdered by a serial killer known as the Campus Killer. And she decides that she wants to go home and ends up taking a ride from a guy named Josh who she met at the college ride sharing board. And during the ride, she starts to worry that Josh might be the killer. I really disliked this book. So Charlie is also an unreliable narrator because she has this disorder where like movies play in her head and when the movies are playing, she can't distinguish between whether they're actually happening or it's all in her head. So it means we see certain things from Charlie's point of view that may or may not be happening, but we don't know. And 
I also don't like Charlie as a character because if you know there's a serial killer out there, why would you be taking a ride from a stranger on a college ride sharing board? So I'm not at all surprised that at points during the book, she suspects that Josh is the killer. And I just, I did not like Charlie at all because again, unreliable narrator who is making decisions that I can't possibly fathom one making if your friend was just murdered by a serial killer. Why would you accept a ride from a stranger? I just, I did not understand the choices she made. I did not like the unreliable narration of the main character. And there was a twist at the end that I really, really disliked. So all in all, two stars might be generous actually with this because now that I'm thinking about it, I think I actually should drop my rating down because I don't think I really liked anything about this book. So I'm really disappointed with that because I really loved Home Before Dark by Riley Sager, but this book just was not for me. Next up, I read Queenslayer by Sebastian de Castell, and I gave this book 4.25 stars. This book fulfilled the prompt A to Z title for Phase 10 Chooses My TBR and Buddy Reed for the Magical Hopathon. This is the fifth book in the Spellslinger series, and in Spellslinger we're following Kellen, who lives in a clan of mages. And I think it's your 17th birthday. By, by that point, you will have displayed magic and you will either be a mage or if you don't have magic, you will essentially become servants to the mage. And Kellen doesn't have a lot of magic. So he's trying to figure out a way to trick them into believing he has magic that he doesn't in passing the trials that you need to pass to become a mage. And during his quest to trick everybody, he ends up meeting Ferris Parafax, who is the stranger to his town. And she kind of turns his life completely upside down. And then we kind of follow his adventures from there. And with this being the fifth book in the series, I really can't talk about what's going on with Kelly now. But I still absolutely love this series. It is so much fun to read Kellen's adventures and see how Kellen continues to get out of the corners he tends to be backed into in each of the books. I really like the characters that Kellen interacts with in this book and trying to figure out along with Kellen, what is going on and who we can trust and who we can't and who's lying to him and who's not. And this was just another really good book in the series. And this has definitely become a series I've really, really loved. Next up, I read A Gentleman in Moscow by Immortals, and I gave this book three and a half stars. So we're following Count Alexander Rostov, and he has been sentenced to house arrest at the Metropo Hotel, which is a luxury hotel. And this book is set in 1922. He's basically sentenced to house arrest for the rest of his life and will be living in this hotel and not allowed outdoors for the rest of his entire life. And we then kind of follow his life and see the world change around him while he is trapped in this hotel. So I think I would have rated this book higher had I read it physically. I listened to the audiobook and I think that this is a book that is better if you're reading along, if you're listening to the audiobook or just physically reading it. So I plan to at some point pick up the physical book and see if I enjoy it more because I feel like there were times where I lost exactly what was going on or when exactly we were because all it takes with an audiobook is not paying attention for a split second to become lost and I think that happened a few times. If you're looking for a plot driven book, this is not the book for you. It is very, very character driven because it is all about the Count's life and seeing how things play out for him after ending up in house arrest and seeing the people he interacts with and just basically how his life plays out and how the world changes around him and also the ways his life does change in unexpected ways despite the fact that he's under house arrest. So this is one that I don't have quite as much to say about because it's you know in the three star range and those books tend to not stick with me quite as much and it's been a while since I've read it because I mean, you can tell I'm behind on these and not as many of the finer details have stuck with me, but it is a book I would like to give another try to just because I think it's one that I would have enjoyed more had I read it physically. So at some point I will give it a reread and see if my rating jumps because I take more in when I read it physically. Next up, I read The Bootlace Magician by Cassie Beasley, and I gave this book four and a half stars. This book fulfilled the prompt to read a book with a rainbow on the cover for Phase 10 Chooses My TBR, and to read a book with a show-stopping cover for The Magical Hopathon. So this is the sequel to Circus Mirandus, and in Circus Mirandus, we're following Micah, whose grandfather is sick, and his grandfather is the person who is taking care of him because his parents have died. And with his grandfather being sick, his great aunt is staying with them to help take care of his grandfather and she is very awful to 
Micah and does not believe in magic. And Micah has grown up believing in magic because his grandfather has constantly told him stories about Circus Mirandus. He's grown up on these stories. And his grandfather asks him to go find the Lightbender because the Lightbender owes his grandfather a miracle. And his grandfather is too sick to go to the Lightbender, so he requests that Micah brings the Lightbender to him. So with his friend Jenny in tow, who is very scientific and doesn't believe in magic and needs to see to believe, he and Jenny set off to go find the Lightbender so that he can get his grandfather's miracle for him. And I love that book. And this is the sequel where we get to follow Micah's journey after the events of what happened in Circus Mirandus. And I still absolutely love the series. I love Circus Mirandus and the whimsical nature of the circus. I love that despite it being a magical circus, not everything is perfect. That there is no such thing as a magic wand that makes everything all better. And I can't really say too much more without spoiling events from the first book, but I really, really, really love this book in this world and these characters. And I don't know if there's any more books in this series, but I hope there are because I would like to see more of Micah and Circus Mirandus. And lastly, I read The Silent Ghost by Sue Ann Jaffron and I gave this book four stars. This fulfilled the prompt thriller slash mystery for Phase 10 Chooses My TBR. So this is a novella in the Granny Apples mystery series. And in this series... We usually follow Emma, who has the ability to see and hear ghosts. And in the first book, Granny Apples, who is like her great grandmother, like four times removed, contacts her because she realizes that Emma can see her and wants to clear her name because Granny Apples died and was basically hung for, the, I believe it was hung, for the murder of her husband. But she didn't murder her husband, so she would like Emma to clear her name. But in this book, it's like a, a novella and we're following Emma's daughter, Kelly, and we're getting to see a glimpse into Kelly's life. And I don't really want to say more than that because I don't want to spoil anything for you. I thought this was a super interesting novella and it was interesting to hear things from Kelly's point of view because we got to see how Kelly was dealing with the idea that her mom has this ability. So we got, we, we got to see what it is like to have a mother that has the ability to see and hear ghosts. And it was interesting to get to know more about Kelly because obviously we've seen Kelly in the first three books because I think this is book 3.5. It was nice to get to spend some more time with Kelly and to develop her character and see a bit of her life. But like I said, there's not much I can say that isn't going to spoil this book or one of the other books, especially considering, like I said, it's only a really short novella. So I really enjoyed it and I... Definitely think it's a good addition to the series. And it was a nice quick read and those are always fun. So these are some of the books I read between October 12th and October 18th. My social media, including my Discord, is linked in the description below if you would like to chat with me about any of these books or any other books. If you've made it this far in the video, leave me a rainbow emoji. Like this video and subscribe to my channel and I'll talk to you next time. Bye!